you for person here. Nine Lima Oscar November. Nine Lima Oscar November. Can I get the first letter of your call? Hi everyone. It's Tom, WA two IVD. We're going to take a quick break from radio tutorials to look at a Parks on the Air activation by the Santa Fe Trail Amateur Radio Club. Parks on the Air, or POTA, is a relatively new facet of ham radio. From what I could find, it looks like the POTA group was originally founded by a few hams in September of 2010. I believe the largest boost of awareness and popularity of POTA came in 2016. The ARRL partnered with the National Park Service to celebrate the 100th anniversary of National Parks in the United States. They jointly sponsored a year-long National Parks on the Air event. That event was really popular with over 21,000 park activations and over 1 million contacts made. Parks on the Air is an international organization with more than 30,000 registered parks in more than 50 countries. You can participate as an activator, as a hunter, or you could do both. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out the POTA website shown below. You'll find several links in the description. Every official park entity is assigned a unique designator number. Official POTA sites don't necessarily have to be parks. Current sites include national monuments, wildlife refuges, national historic trails, and other locations. In some places, there are two or more designators at the same location. This allows activators and hunters to get credit for multiple parks with a single QSO. One of these places is in Johnson County, Kansas, where the Santa Fe Trail Amateur Radio Club is located. Recently, the club did a POTA activation at Lone Elm Park in Olathe, Kansas. At this park, the club's namesake, the Santa Fe Trail, converges with the Oregon and California National Historic Trails. This allowed the club to host a threefer and hand out three park credits with every QSO. Three park identifiers for you. Ready? Yep, go ahead. Okay, we are operating uh, three historic trails. Kilo 4579 Santa Fe Trail, Kilo 4566 California Trail, and Kilo 4576 Oregon Trail. The setup was very much a field day style operation with temporary antennas and multiple stations. There's no requirement to run emergency power for POTA activations, but there was no convenient access to grid power near our stations, so this was a good opportunity for one club member to test out his generator. The club operated three separate stations for the event. There were two stations operating single sideband, one operated on 20 meters and the other operated on 40 meters. A third station operated CW on 12 and 17 meters. A POTA activation is not considered a contest, so operating on the work bands is okay. Let's listen in on a few contacts. Kilo Delta 9, Lima, Oscar, November, year 58 in the K. 4566, K4576, and K4579. Roger, Roger. You are 5 here in Central Illinois. I uh, appreciate the activation and uh, hope you have good success. Thanks for hunting. Enjoy the, uh, we enjoy ourselves out here in uh, good hunting. This is KS0, KS clear. About 10 miles uh, on to the west from here, the trails divided and went their separate routes, but as they came out of Westport, and through Johnson County, they were all operating on one trail site. Copy? Uh, copy that. I've got a park number also. I'm just setting up, and uh, hopefully I'll get an activation today also. Well, very good. Give me your park number. We'll get that in the log as well. Came uh, at Park Kilo 1804. 1804, that's Bluestone State Park in West Virginia. Okay, Kilo 184. Zero 04 in uh, Bluestone State Park in West Virginia. Uh, QSL, I got just 5 9 out here. Very good. You got a nice 5 9 signal into uh, Kansas as well. We are uh, about uh, 20 miles out of Kansas City, Missouri. The club made a total of 186 QSOs during the five hour activation. That was pretty good considering that there were some state QSO parties and a couple other things going on that same weekend. 
Activating a podocyte is a great way to practice your portable setup and operating skills. It can also be a lot of fun. If some passers-by ask you what you're doing, you can also make an opportunity to promote amateur radio. If this piqued your interest to try a different aspect of ham radio, be sure to check out the links in the description. If you happen to live near Kansas City or you'd like more information about the club, you'll find a link for that in the description as well. Finally, be sure to check out the link for A to Z tech. That's the companion website for this channel. That's it for this time. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You'll want to click on that bell icon so you get notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.